Well, what's so extraordinary about my great great grandmother? Not only was she a winemaker, um, she owned her own store back in the 40s and 50s. She owned land. Hey there, I am Rita Rick, and I want to welcome you to Sweet Vines Farm Winery. And I am with Saida Armstrong. Thank you for having us here. Thank you for having me. I'm excited, girl. Been thinking about this all week. Oh. So I want to jump right in okay. by first saying that you are one of the first black female vineyard owners, winemaker with a winery. Yes, ma'am. And how many acres do you have? 122 currently. I'm loving it. You all just sit back and listen because I got a lot of questions. All right. Let's start with where you're from. So I'm originally from Chicago, Illinois. Okay. Um, I attended the University of Illinois at Urbana mm -hmm. um, for my undergrad, and then I moved here at 21. It was supposed to be a summer Where intern. is here? He, um, the D.C. metropolitan area. Okay. So, um, I moved here at 21, and um, I lived in Temple Hill, Maryland for like three months. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, I like Virginia better. Mm -hmm. So I actually moved into the Virginia um, area. Okay. Um, and... I was working for the U.S. Department of Education as an intern. Right. And um, decided that I love the D.C. metropolitan area and wanted to stay. Okay. All right. So let's come. We're down here now. I'm just going to skip over to the whole three generation piece because I want to get into the wine piece. Okay. Okay. Talk so, to me about the three generations. And I can see up here three generations of winemakers. Three makers. generations of winemakers. Yeah. So what's so amazing about that is my my wine journey started in 2009, and one of my former teachers, um, when I was a middle school principal, um, husband was an engineer, and um, I was invited to their house for dinner. And he was like, hey, you wanna see my winemaking um, studio? And he had it in his basement, and um, he worked on the Dogger Naval Base, and it was so amazing. And I just felt so connected to it, like I wanted to learn more um, and experience more about it. So I actually convinced my superintendent and two other colleagues to go with me to make wine. I found this wine making place um, in Alexandria and it was a storefront place. And I just remember walking away like, this is not what I you know, experienced at this gentleman's house who was mm -hmm. an engineer. It just didn't feel right. I knew it wasn't right. So I started doing my own research. Um, Why didn't that feel right? What was not, what was not happening at that it space? Was a, at that space, it was a commercial space and you walked in, they had the buckets there you, you actually used the yeast. So a lot of it was right, but it was mm -hmm. kind of like rushed, mm -hmm. you know, it wasn't the winemaking experience that um, you're actually taking the time there. You know, there there's chemistry involved. There's the math involved. Um, um, I, I have like I have a STEM background, part right. STEM background, although mm -hmm. I taught English and things like that. However, um, the, the STEM nerd in me would say, OK, this is missing a lot of steps and that storefront place, it just missed a lot of steps. And they told us to come back in six weeks so we could bottle our wine. And we were like, mm, you know, this just, it, it just wasn't the okay. experience. Okay. So um, I, I, I'm self-taught basically. Um, and in fast forward from 2009 to 2016, I was um, making wine and just giving bottles away to friends and family. Cause it was just like a hobby. It mm -hmm. was like a, a stress reliever, to be mm -hmm. honest with you, mm -hmm. from what I was doing in terms of my primary job at the time. And so um, my aunt, my great aunt, which is my grandmother's sister, my grandmother raised me. And um, she said, you know, Saida, it's crazy that you're making wine. She's like, this is in your DNA. She was like, your great grandmother and great great grandmother made wine. And they're from Mississippi originally, and they both moved to Memphis. But what's so extraordinary about my great great grandmother, not only was she a winemaker, um, she owned her own store back in the 40s and 50s. We own, she owned land mm -hmm. um, back then. So we're actually doing the historical research to figure out what happened. Right. Um, right. And, and how did she, you know, what, what was it like being a store owner back yeah. then? Just things like yeah. that. So, do, did you, do you remember, were they alive when you, with you? So, my great great grandmother, no. Okay. My great grandmother, because my grandmother raised us, it's mm -hmm. kind of like my great aunts and uncles. Mm -hmm. My grandmother was older of 13 kids. Mm -hmm. So they became like my first aunts and uncles, you know, right. first um, connected aunts and uncles. And basically every summer until I was 12 years old, I spent from four until 12 with my great grandmother. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. 
So they were they were making the wine, and so that's what's in your DNA. It sounds that's like. what's in that's what's in my DNA. Okay, so I'm now going to switch to the education piece, and then we'll get back to the wine. Okay, so talk to me about how you you know what did you decide to, to be a teacher or a principal or what? So yeah, so. So I decided to be a, um, a principal, mm -hmm. but I was humbled um, at school very quickly at the University of Illinois when I, when I was told, well, honey, you just can't jump and be a principal. You have to become a teacher first. That's what they say. Uh, that's what they say. That's right. Um, and I know a couple who just, you know, just went straight to being mm -hmm. a principal, so it mm -hmm. can work. But I digress. I actually taught for five years. I taught two years in Washington, D.C., public schools, which taught me how to be a leader. And it taught me how to be a professional. I, DC public schools, really, those, those professionals there as educators, they are hard workers. Mm -hmm. And I learned how to dress for success. And um, someone told me early on that we work for and with very important people, the, v the real VIP. And so we had to dress the part every day. Mm -hmm. And I'm so happy mm -hmm. I had that early beginning because when I moved to Virginia as a teacher, I was able to keep that mindset, although there was a difference yeah. in terms of the presentation. Understood. Um, so after my five years, two years in D.C., three years in Prince William County mm -hmm. as a teacher, um, I actually started my administrative career in Spotsylvania County um, and then um, went to Westmoreland okay. and then in King George as a principal and then Falls Church as a principal. Wow. Yeah. And then I left um, and became an educational consultant. OK. Um, with now, was that your own business? That was my own business. Okay. Yes. And did you, uh, you just left uh, the, the principal or did you retire from education? You know what? I would say I'm too young to retire. Okay. I, I think I was at a crossroads of, I felt like I was too young to go into central office. And um, I feel like I had done um, my time as a principal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was just like, you know, what's, what, what's, what's next? What's next? Yeah. And I had been doing educational consulting work thanks to one of my mentors, Dr. Vera Blake. Um, she actually believed that I could do it. And I started um, actually doing educational consulting work back in 2008 okay. um, for the Virgin Islands, um, St. Thomas and St. Croix. Yeah. And um, so when I stepped out, it was like, okay, I can do this. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, the stage had already been set. And I just took that leap of faith and it was awesome. So I just want everybody to understand that we didn't get here where we are today like this. That's right. So and it's important, particularly for women to hear. Yes. You know, I always say we have to kiss a lot of frogs. We, a lot. <laughs> to get to where it is we want to be. Yes. So now we can come back to you getting I think you had 10 acres. I talk did. To, talk to me about that. So um, when I realized I wanted to be a, a more serious winemaker and make this a career, um, like a switch. Um, I think my mindset was that I can do this because it felt so natural. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I think that that validation was there once my great aunt said, Hey, your great grandmother and great, great grandmother were winemakers. And when I heard that my great, great grandmother was also a, a store owner, mm -hmm. I was like, you mm -hmm. know, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And what's so amazing is that I have quite a few family members who are, who are entrepreneurs. So um, with that said, um, I decided to start looking for um, land. Mm -hmm. um, we found several properties in Stafford in Prince William County that were beautiful properties that I just said, hey, this is it, this is it. And um, we found a place in Bristol, Virginia, and it was on 10 acres. Um, a 9,000 square foot home. And it just, when we walked in, it was, I mean, it was just, it was a statement piece. Mm -hmm. And my husband, when we walked in, he said, this is not big enough for your dreams. He kind of spoke that into existence. I believe in like divine too. intervention, divine destiny. That's right. And what you speak is what you get. And That's so good. that was 2018. Mm -hmm. In 2020, um, <laughs> kind of like what he spoke mm -hmm. came back and, and it was like um prince william county was like hey high five whatever you need from us we were going through steps and i mean it was just a very smooth and natural process then we kind of hit a roadblock mm -hmm. um and not to get too far into the details however um it, it was a situation where the 10 acres wasn't enough 
the community probably wasn't the right community for us to be in. Wasn't a great fit. Understood. And so um, with mentorship um, and guidance, um, I was told to, hey, you know, why don't you invest in another property? The, it, the season is right for buyers. Um, I mean, for sellers. So we were able to sell our property. And I, I looked on Zillow, found this property, didn't say anything to my husband. This property. This yeah. property that we're sitting on, the 122 acre. And I kind of had a spiritual connection and was talking to God like, this is it. Mm. But I knew it was going to take something to convince my husband that I found my property for the business. And so we looked at 10 other properties. And when we got here, when we got here, he said, this is it. And I said, yeah, this is it. So he kind of walked the land and he felt it too. Mm -hmm. um, I still don't think he was convinced of what the dream could be or mm -hmm. what it could look like. Mm -hmm. um, but I started right away. Again, I had the blueprint and we were already starting it in another county. So it was easy for me to come here. I knew between the federal um, process and the state process what it would take to open. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we just hit the ground running. You know, I want to stop just a second because I say all the time, you you have to have the vision. You do. And the vision does come from God. Yeah, I agree. And so you have to be quiet in order to hear it. Yes. But when you can picture it, and certainly then you know, and that vision is going to push you Absolutely. into into this. Yes. You know, yes. instead of, because there are a lot of people who are working and they're, and and they're being pulled yes. and they're just pulled. And you are, I love that you had this vision that 10 acres, your husband saw it was just not enough. And now, now you're here. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So um, now just a little funny note. Mm -hmm. So my, my favorite scripture is um, a proverb scripture says the peace, you know, without a vision, the people shall perish. Right. And so I've always used that as my mantra. My husband Though he left the 10 acres kicking and screaming. Because I mean, you know, you become rude. Who wants sure, to move sure, every three years sure. or something like that? Mm -hmm. So, um, but, and, and who wants to move on a farm if you're not used to that lifestyle? Mm -hmm. um, so it was, it was a funny transition. Mm -hmm. What I will say is that um, it's been this Orange County community, specifically Unionville, mm -hmm. um, it's a network unlike any other. Um, and the Unionville community, what people don't realize is that we're close to Freetown mm -hmm. and we are, Unionville is one of the first places that African-Americans could buy land after slavery. Wow. And not only that, there are still some of the original descendants in this area. Um, and one such family is the Carter family mm -hmm. and their farm was established in 1910. Okay. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Mm -hmm. So talk to me. So this space that we're in, this is the tasting room right here. This is and the, you all also live here. Yes. And you also make the wine here. Yes. And you're the only one making the wine. So talk to me, right? Yes. So talk to me about what's your day like? What's your schedule? Oh, so um, my, for some reason, my internal clock has me up. I'm, I'm up. By 5.30 Okay, so we can talk every morning. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 5.30 a.m. Yeah. And I have to tell you, I start my day with devotion. Yeah. I can't. I don't even get out of bed until I do my devotion. Um, and then um, my husband is the coffee maker. So mm -hmm. he goes downstairs. He makes coffee. Mm -hmm. We say our prayers together. Mm -hmm. And then um, we get up and I'm usually in the farm. There's 122 acres. So grass gets cut. We laugh about that. Grass gets cut every day. Mm -hmm. Everybody on this farm can use every tool, even the 11 year old. Mm -hmm. Everybody can use a tractor, everybody can use a zero turn, everybody use a hand lawnmower, and that's what we do. Okay. Um, and we cut grass. First thing in the morning, for, typically? Because it gets hot, yeah. you know, later yeah. on in the day, yeah. so yes. Yeah. Um, that's one of the things. I use um, neem oil to spray my plants, because I only have like an acre um, of grapes produce here, um, and then my garden. So I use neem oil to sp spray and protect my plants from um, and my vines from the bugs and, and we're growing. So I now have moved to like a, a spray pack and I'm mm -hmm. telling you, I do, I belong to the Virginia Vineyard Association. So I learned about the spray backpack mm -hmm. and, and it's been an easier process. Just, um, move it to a more, um, I guess efficient. So yes. yeah, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, there's always work to do. Um, why make it doesn't happen all the time for me. Um, because I'm such. Let a, me just ask them. Yes. You plant all. You plant the vines. I have a 
a team. It's a small team of okay. family. Okay. Um, and then I have two dedicated workers on the weekends. I call them my weekend warriors okay. because they have day jobs, mm -hmm. Monday through Friday. Mm -hmm. But um, when I say faithfully, one for three years and one for four years have awesome. been working with me every weekend, mm -hmm. faithfully. Wow. Um, and one has opened his own landscaping business. He started off here and Good. it's called It's Done Law Service. So I just give him a little plug. But Good. anyway, yes, Good. yes, Good. yes, yes. So, so you've got uh, some vines here, but then you also have another space. I, I lease. Okay. Lease. Okay. Um, it's a thing, right? So mm -hmm. I lease 7.5 acres of grapes, which used to be the old Oak Crest Winery oh. in King George, Virginia. And just a coincidence, I was the principal, as I mentioned earlier, in King George, Virginia, King George Middle School. Mm -hmm. So full circle, one of my former counselors, who I'm still connected to, she um, stated that the person who owned the the new winery, well, the, the old winery, mm -hmm. um, he didn't want the grapes. He just wanted the the property, but he didn't want to tear down the grapes. I mean, yeah, what an investment, yeah, right? Exactly. And so they're older. They're very mature. Some of them are, you know, some of them are sick. Some of them have disease, but some of them are still robust and mm -hmm. producing great fruit. And so um, we made a deal um, and um, it, another blessing, another divine I'm, intervention. I'm hearing, I'm hearing that, which mm -hmm. is, which mm -hmm. is awesome. Yes. Awesome. It's, yeah. and, and those deals are out there. Okay. So, yeah. okay. No question. No yes. question. Okay. So this is the tasting room. Yes, ma'am. And you're open. When, what are your hours and days? So we're open from 11 to 5, Thursday through Saturday. Okay. And from one to six p.m. Okay. on Sunday. Okay. I always tell people to check our website and our social media pages because we do close for a lot of private events. Right. It's been a blessing where we have larger birthdays or like fiftieth birthday celebrations. That seemed to be the thing this year, fiftieth celebrations, and then um, like family reunions. So we'll close the event like for weddings and things like that. Right. Um, the venue. Right. Um, but right. so I ask people to call first, and I prefer reservations just because. I like to go through the educational process. For the tasting? But, yes. Okay. So I learned I learned something very valuable. I've been to Napa um, a couple of times mm -hmm. now. And mm -hmm. one of the things I learned in Napa Valley at one of my favorite um, vineyards is that um, there's a difference between tasting associates and tasting ambassadors. So until I can find another ambassador mm -hmm. who knows my story and can tell my story and knows my product right. and believes in my product, right. um, I like to schedule those appointments so you can get the authentic me. Correct. If that makes sense. Yes, of course it does. Yeah. So I know that Christina, our videographer, has taken some pictures outside. Yes. Um, but I want you to tell them what's on the grounds right now. And then we'll talk about these. Yay. Okay. So um, <laughs> we have worked hard to create um, an experience. And I'm going to call it like a skeleton experience because I want people to come on the property and visualize their event, whether mm -hmm. it's a wedding, whether it's um, uh, a graduation party, whether it's an anniversary, um, I want them to see it mm -hmm. um, themselves. And so we have worked hard to um, create a space mm -hmm. that's an outdoor um, and semi-indoor event space in which we're continuing to add. So they, when people come here, they'll notice that there are a lot of places to just sit. There's mm -hmm a swing with a fire pit that you can sit, eat s'mores, or just have fun with your girlfriends mm -hmm. um, and drink a bottle of wine, of course. Of course. Um, there is a creek that mm -hmm. you can sit all along the creek and do the same thing mm -hmm. um, with the water running. It's beautiful. It's called Terry's Run. Um, there's a he sheet and a, sweet, a she sweet. And the she sweet and he sweet are there for the purpose of indoor I mean, oh, outdoor weddings. Right, right, right. Um, there's a koi pun in the center of it. Um, and the, the purpose is for the bride and the groom um, to, to be there as a staging area right. as they prepare to get right. married and walk across the, uh, the aisle. And the pool. And there is a pool. Yes. There is a pool. And we have, so the, I, I have one couple who are, I've never heard of this, mm -hmm. and maybe you have. Okay. Um, but they're talking about a poolside wedding where they actually run a plexiglass piece across the pool, and they stand in the middle of the pool with the pastor, and they actually get married 
over the pool. I've never. Yeah, no, I've not heard that. Yeah. Either. <laughs> so, but but again, like that's why I said I want to call this like a this exactly. is like the bones. It's, like we yeah, put things it's an here. Experience. It's an experience, sure. and you come and you visualize. Yeah, yeah. I put that plexiglass. Never would have thought about that. Right. Right. But right. you know. Right. You know, if you can think it, dream right. it. We can help you get to, and, and you get have there. a gorgeous deck right here. Yes, yeah. we do. We have mm -hmm. a covered pergola. Mm -hmm. um, Doctor Monroe, who is still a middle school principal. Oh, well, he's still still a principal. I think his middle school. And it's her Monroe. You, is it her? Is it her Monroe? And okay. I don't, I'm not 100 okay. percent sure. Okay. However, what I will say is he owns his own business, uh -huh. um, and he built this wonderful pergola ah, system for us. Okay. Um, he and his brothers, and they're out of the um, Richmond area okay. as well. So okay. I'll give his information okay. and make sure that you get mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Yes. Okay. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about the yeah. wine. So yeah. um, the first wine that I created was a Muscadine wine. And let me tell you. Is about, that what this is, right? That's what this is yeah. right here. And it's the frosted bottle. Love and Muscadine it. is an American mm -hmm. grape. Mm -hmm. um, I love the clarity mm -hmm. of this wine. Mm -hmm. um, now, what I will say is it's not a popular grape mm -hmm. in, in the wine community. Mm -hmm. However, for ancestral purposes, a lot of people, um, no matter the nationality, can relate to this grape because it's probably one of the first grape experiences they had mm -hmm. as a natural grown grape in the southern region. Mm -hmm. Um, in some no northern areas as well. So if you had like a scuppernong or a muscadine grape, scuppernong. it's just, yeah. yeah. So people, Got it. it's like back in your Got childhood, it. you Got take it. it off the tree. Yes, yeah. the vine. And yeah, yeah, yeah. So my grandmothers both made muscadine wine. Okay. Now I'm sure that theirs were, were much sweeter and I always joking like that diabetes sweet, you know? <laughs> and I hate to say that, but some of us like are real sweet. <laughs> so what I will say is that this is, a light refreshing mm -hmm. um, version it of is. it, not as it sweet, um, but we call it the ancestor. So although it's a, 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 a white wine, it's muscadine, um, I call it the ancestors because, I mean, it's the least I can do for my grandmother. Of course. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. So um, the second, well, I, I have a Chardonnay mm -hmm. um, and my, of course, my babies are young. Mm -hmm. So I do have Chardonnay growing out in the mm -hmm. vineyard. Mm -hmm. uh, but right now, my Chardonnay grapes do come from California. OK. Um, my Muscadine come from North Carolina. Um, however, my Muscadine are now three years old. So for the first time, I was able to make a batch of, um, of, of our Muscadine wine with some of my grapes. Um, so I was excited about that. Mm -hmm. And then my Chamberson. Chamberson is a hybrid grape and it can be, um, I, I, I like to, I have my Chamberson. If I can call that or name it something, I'll call a slow storm, like, mm -hmm. or quiet storm or something oh. like that because it can be temperamental. Wow. Um, and so, but it's a good quality. Um, I can produce a good quality wine from it. And we actually make a wine um, that I'll let you taste today. Okay. Um, from our Chamberson. Um, when I went to the Williamsburg wine where I fell in love with their spiced wine. Mm -hmm. So I, I knew that I could make one and we call ours Typo, T-Y-P-O. Okay. It's our second most popular wine. Again, made from the Chamberson grapes and three spices and Typo stands for take your panties off. Oh, all righty then. I think I'll just have a little we'll bit drink more to that. of this. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Typo. Typo. <laughs> <laughs> Speechless. That's where I am right now. Just speechless. <laughs> Love it. So um, one of the things that people think that you have to open up with just grapes. Mm -hmm. I was able to open up because of strawberries and blueberries. OK. Um, and I do make I make a mean um, blueberry wine. We call it Big Papa. OK. And then I have a strawberry wine, which is here. And that is a um, strawberry lavender. So I didn't want just strawberry wine. And again, going back to that STEM yes. nerd in me. Yes, yes, yes. Nerd being a very positive thing, a mm -hmm. high five thing. Mm -hmm. um, but STEM standing for science, technology, engineering, and math. And I wanted That's to right. say that because not a lot of people. I know. Everybody yes. doesn't know that. Know. We have that background. So mm -hmm. um, the strawberry lavender, we call it summer evening. Mm -hmm. And it's exactly what it says. It's strawberry um, with lavender mm -hmm. infused in it. And it's. Um, it's a, it's an experience. So when you're making it, um, and, and it is an experience, do you, do you sip and spit and sip and spit, you know, or do you just get wasted? What? 
So when I'm making the wine? Yeah. Oh, I have to sip and spit. <laughs> and that's the natural, you know, that's the process you're supposed to do. I, I love Virginia because in Napa, it's like a part of the process. People tell you to spit and things mm-hmm. like that. But mm-hmm. here in Virginia, I, it's like poor, poor pass, right? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's throwing anything away. Um, so what I tell people is like, hey, I have a, a bucket that you can pour it in. Okay. A nice little like, ice bucket okay. um, that you can pour your wine but in. But I mean, when you're making it. Do the same thing. I pour it. Got it. Yeah, I don't spit. Okay. So, um, sometimes like if I'm trying to get the flavor and I know it's not, mm-hmm. you know, the, the notes that I'm, I'm used to, I, I spit. I'm not going to lie and say I haven't spit, mm-hmm. um, but that's a part of the process, right? Mm-hmm. And you want to make sure um, it, it's like documentation. Just like when I was a principal, you need documentation, Document, documentation, documentation. You want to because yeah. you want to make sure that yeah. you're making it the same way, and you know when it tastes different, like Good. you know. So Good. and so you 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 are making it and you're tasting it. Is that 24 hours? Is it 12 hours? Um, to make the whole process, it depends. Like, you know, for a good Chardonnay, it takes two years. Yes, ma'am. Okay. It takes, you know, once you make it and the fermentation, things like that, it should sit for about two Mm -hmm. years. Now, Mm -hmm. what I will tell you, I'm one of, um, quite a few Virginia wineries who have moved to the steel tank. I do not oak barrel my Chardonnay. Okay. Um, I actually use a steel tank for it and I like that flavor without the oakiness and the Mm -hmm. Chardonnay. Um, but I do experiment with oak in other ways. Okay. So like my blueberry goes through an oaking process. Okay. Mm-hmm. Do you have a steel tank here on I the do. property? I, I do. I, I have two. Okay. Now, you know, why I'm, I'm be the first to say equipment is expensive, yeah, is yeah. you know? So I, um, you know, I've been able to work my way up by secondhand mm-hmm. um, to, and I, I'm proud of it because yeah. it's still, um, I'm still able to make it. You mm-hmm. know, there's some equipment I can buy firsthand, but, I, you know, I'll take anybody used stuff yeah, and of course. make it work. And so um, I'm trying to move to more automated systems um, because I cork myself. Yeah. I bottle myself. So and there's a whole there's a bottling company that can come through, mm-hmm. but I'm just not there yet. I'm considered a boutique winery. Yes. Um, and there are probably at least 50 out there mm-hmm. who um, are just like me, you yeah. know, not too big. I don't see myself being like grand, um, but I do see. Yet. Yeah, you're saying yet. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll accept it. Yeah. I'll yeah. accept it. What I will say is my five-year goal is mm. for this to be a winery and a resort. Right. Stage, part of stage one is the bed and breakfast. Once we build our home, mm-hmm. um, this will become a full bed and breakfast. Good, good, good. good. Yes. You know, we could go on forever. I know. I love, I love this because I, I don't know that I've had an opportunity. I probably haven't spoken to a female winemaker. Yes. And so there's so many more things I want to learn. So obviously we will be back. Okay. I know you're going to be at the exclusive blacklist I in am. a couple of weeks. I'm so honored, yes. uh, we hope that folks will come. We will be at Main Street Station in Richmond All right. on Saturday night. I can't remember the date, but June somebody. 20, June 16th and June 17th. Good. Good, good, good. So um, that's important for you all to get this because uh, Benita does such an amazing yes. job. So Friday night, she's going, uh, Thursday night, yes. she will have um, pairing, wine paired with different chefs. And then on Friday night, we're going to be at Main Street Station and it's going to be all female winemakers. Isn't that uh, awesome? Yes. It's it is some awesome. amazing system. And we're just going to have a great time yes. meeting. I heard that you're an AKA. I'm not, but it's okay. It's okay. It's we, okay. Got it. we got it. We're all sisters. We got it. That's we got right. it. So thank you yes. so much. Thank you. Your website is? www.thevines, T-H-E-V-I-N-E-S dot farm. Okay. And where are we? We are in Unionville, Virginia, mm-hmm. which is an orange County, mm-hmm. Virginia. Yeah. The original OC, by the way. Okay. It's the original OC. We used to span all the way to Chicago. People don't know that back in the 1600s. Yes. Wow. Yeah, the original OC. Yeah. We'll be back because this has just been Please. so nice. We'd love to have you. Thank you. Always welcome. All right, everybody. Thank you for listening. Thank you for hanging in there with us. And we'll see you in a week or two. Bye bye.